going to be the person I'm expected to be anymore. Intelligent, dedicated, magnetic and beautiful. They're just some of the words that have been used to pay tribute to the French actor Gaspar Udiel, who's died after a skiing accident in the Alps. Known for portraying the young Hannibal Lecter and the fashion designer Yves Saint Laurent, his tragic death has shocked the film world. Leo McGinn reports. Dubbed one of the greatest talents of his generation, actor Gaspar Ulliel died on Wednesday at the age of 37 following a skiing accident the day before. He was spending time with family in the La Rosière resort in the French Alps. Born in Paris, the actor first appeared on our screens as a teenager, with his breakthrough role coming in the 2003 film Strayed. He continued to enhance his reputation with a role in the film A Very Long Engagement, for which he was awarded the César Award for Most Promising Actor. Over the following two decades, he appeared alongside some of the biggest names in French cinema. He continued to receive adulation for his work, winning the César Award for Best Actor in 2017 in It's Only the End of the World by Xavier Dolan. News of his death has been greeted with shock and sadness in his home country. On Twitter, actor Pierre Nini said, Broken heart, Gaspar was benevolence and kindness, beauty and talent, thoughts to his family. The French Minister of Culture, Joseline Bachelot, also paid tribute to him. His sensitivity and the intensity of his acting made Gaspar Ulliel an exceptional actor. Cinema today is losing an immense talent. I send my condolences to his loved ones and my loving thoughts to those who mourn him today. Ulliel also made a mark on the international stage, gaining attention for his performance as the famous cannibal in Hannibal Rising in 2007. He had recently been cast to appear in the upcoming Marvel series Moon Knight. Well, Gaspar Ulliel plays the baddie Midnight Man in the new Marvel TV series Moon Knight, starring Oscar Isaac. It's due to be on Disney Plus in March. Over the years, our team have met him several times, most recently at the Cannes Film Festival in 2019 for To the Ends of the World with Gérard Depardieu. He was always very down to earth, but at the same time very careful about the words he used to talk about his craft. He took the subject of film very seriously. People often reference what you could say is a physical beauty, but of course that is something very subjective. And in my process as an actor, I try to stay clear of that. Does a sort of question bother you? Of course, it does bother me a bit. Are you shy? There is a form of shyness involved. At one point, I really tried to establish myself in Hollywood. And then I realized that it was a bit like starting again from scratch, regardless of what I'd already achieved. So I'm not really interested in that. I do get offers now and again from the US, but they are rarely roles that are as interesting as the sort of things that I'm getting in France at the moment. So no, I can't say that I'm tempted. What matters to me is playing a role that allows me to explore something new, something that forces me out of my comfort zone. I was a teenager at the time, but I have a very powerful memory of the first time I walked the red carpet at the Cannes Film Festival, especially being so young. Your favorite cinematic kiss? My kiss with Louis Garel in Saint Laurent. Dans Saint Laurent. That was the late Gaspar Ulliel, who died early this week, aged 37. Well, let's get some other culture news now. And it might be closed, but it's now possible to visit Paris's famous Notre Dame virtually. The cathedral's roof is being restored after the devastating fire in April 2019. That's expected to be completed by 2024. Well, now we can explore the Gothic Cathedral virtually with an immersive experience called Eternal Notre Dame. Nick Rushworth takes a look. Visitors find themselves on the top of Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris with a vertigo-inducing view down into the empty cathedral. This is a virtual reality adventure. Ludovic here is in fact a virtual version of a visitor to Notre Dame as it would have been in the Middle Ages.
being able to get close up is stunning. They're deep in the medieval era, looking at things as they were 800 years ago. They're not by our side here in time and space. Each visitor creates their own virtual reality double. And wears the latest in VR technology for 45 minutes of full immersion. There are even raindrops. We're at the cathedral's front door. It's really impressive. It's fantastic, an incredible look at the past. The cathedral is due to reopen in 2024 following the fire three years ago. The virtual visit available now allows people to see the bells and the roof's timber structure. It feels a bit like you're playing a video game, but there's no screen. Instead, you're center stage. The visitors are in a venue in the La Défense district in the Paris suburbs in what is a world first. 50 people can take part at once. Each person can see the others, just like in real life. They can see each other and talk, and you don't bump into anyone, even though you're wearing a virtual reality headset. The visit costs 30 euros for the 45 minutes. A third of that money goes to the cathedral's restoration. Next, Antoine de Saint-Exupéry's classic, The Little Prince, is arguably one of the best-known children's books of all time. Published three quarters of a century ago, the story of a lone boy living on a tiny planet with a sly fox and a passive, aggressive rose has been read to children the world over. And its philosophical lessons and metaphors also fascinate adults. Yuka Roya reports. Once upon a time, there was a Christmas story written by a valiant pilot, Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. First published in France in 1946, The Little Prince recently marked its 75th anniversary, but the story and its characters remain as fresh as ever. Saint-Exupéry wrote the story in New York where he was taking refuge during the war. The title character is considered to be his alter ego and shares a striking resemblance to the author in his childhood. But the aviator never got to see the book's success. He disappeared off the coast of Marseille in 1944. Popularised by the French actor Gérard Philippe, The Little Prince has since had phenomenal success. Today, it's the second most translated book in the world after the Bible. From Egyptian hieroglyphs to Morse code and the language of Star Wars, it's been written in 490 languages and dialects through nearly 6,000 different editions. It's a book that we pass on through generations. People read it to their children and to their grandchildren. It continues to find new readers around the world, with 5 million copies sold every year. In France, 15 million copies have been sold in total. The depth of the story attracts people of all ages. It is only with the heart that one can see rightly. What is essential is invisible to the eye. Everyone, I think, needs to learn from this book because you really learn how to be a, a child and live your life to the fullest. It's a philosophical tale and contains a lot of metaphors, comparisons and symbolism. The main message of The Little Prince is about our existence and the absurdity of our world, the relationship with work that gives us a sense of life, the responsibility of others and hence solidarity among the people and the issue of love which is embodied by the rose. For me, it's also about freedom because the fox leaves the little prince even though he managed to tame it. And the little prince leaves his rose, the pilot. The little prince has also become a huge commercial success. It even has its own theme park. The story has been adapted into a number of films, cartoons and puppet shows. This year, for the first time, saint Exupéry's original manuscript and sketches will cross the Atlantic from the US for an exhibit in Paris. Always good to look back at a French classic. Now, just before we go, tributes are flooding in for the French actor Gaspard Ulliel, who died after a skiing accident this week. He was 37. We're going to leave you with some of his films. Remember our website, we're also on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this. Vous êtes le seul aujourd'hui. Je plus de concurrence, c'est bien mon drame. I found them. The men who 
killed my family. I said, oh, watch out. Soyez pas contre moi par principe. Like a motherless. Now tell me, Inspector, you lost family in the war. Yes. Did you catch who did it? No. Then we are both suspects. Imprévisible. Et pourtant, ce n'est qu'un déjeuner en famille. C'est pas la fin du monde.